Behind me is the finish area of the 1989 Men's World Championship Downhill Course, designed by Swiss star Bernard Roussy. Earlier on, we took a close look at the course, and talking us through it was Crazy Canuck, Ken Reed. Well, up at the start, it's a long downhill, and right out of the start, you have a very steep pitch, which has been built up to accelerate the racer across the top flats, which are, are very flat. It's extremely important to be gliding, a very aerodynamic position, and carry as much speed as possible. The top flat will run about, uh, say, 12 to 15 seconds, and you come into the first of three jumps on what is called spruce saddle face. The uh, first and second jump have a compression in the middle, so the racer has to adjust his line and be very subtle on his skis to carry as much speed as possible out across the next flat, which is called Highway 89. Coming into Highway 89, the speed is, is quite high. It's about 130 kilometers an hour. And, and Highway 89 is very, very flat. But you have to glide again in a low tuck in a very aerodynamic position. And at the end of the flat, a bunch of man-made rolls have been built in, which means then you also have to be very supple on your skis, something that Peter Mueller is exceptionally good at. Then you come to the top first jump on Willie's faces, which is a blind jump. Not difficult. The key, though, is they've got to land. They don't want to fly too far and turn immediately onto the first left-hand turn to set up for the probably the hardest turn on the course, which is the sweeping right-hand turn in the middle of Willie's face, because the, the turn changes in terrain as you go around, goes to an extreme side hill, and then there's a bump right at the end of it, which no one is able to hold in a very tight aerodynamic position. And then you have a gate in the middle of the traverse of which if you miss the bump, you have to turn back up the hill and it'll cost you time. The next turn coming back again to the left is called Swiss Bank. It's not difficult, but it does have a compression right in the middle. Again, it's key just to keep running a smooth edge. And at the exit of that, there's a camel jumper, which is Zerussi's trademark, where you jump off the front to the back of a second jump. And approaching then the amen jump, which is again a blind jump. Very simple, you just have to push your hands forward. It's a long flight, 40, almost 40 meters, but a very, very easy landing. You then go into moonshine, which has lots of little rolls in it, which again, it's very important to be supple. And as you come out of moonshine, you're into the, the trademark of this course called Rattlesnake Alley. Rattlesnake Alley is not that difficult, but what you need to do is you need to use the banks. You come in and to carry as much speed as possible through it, you ski off of the banks at where it's icy. There's three turns in Rattlesnake Alley. As you exit out of Rattlesnake Alley, you come into the final finish use, which is a combination of Ford's porch, a very series of very technical turns, and then finally Roosie's rolls, which is a combination of tricky bumps, as we saw in the combined downhill, where Parakala almost went down. But really, if you're online, very straightforward and into the finish. Well, an exciting view of the course and expert analysis from one of skiing's greats. So, all set for an exciting men's world championship downhill. And on course, two skiing legends have their predictions. For me, I think that the best gliders and the best jumpers will win here. And for me, the favorites are Girardelli, Müller, Torbrecken, Höflener. Mm -hmm. These are the favorites for me. I'm going to stick with the guy who won here last year in the pre-world championship downhill. He's, and, uh, he's the defending world champion, Peter Mueller, because it's a downhill that's virtually tailored to him. And uh, I think up to now, Peter hasn't done that well in the World Cup because he hasn't really had the pressure to perform like he did last year, where he had to qualify for the Olympic downhill. Here, he was already qualified, and so I think he's saving it for the big race. Second up was Daniel Mara of Switzerland. Good results so far this year with a win on the infamous Hanen Kamen Kitzbühel. But today, a very different course with temperatures at the top at minus 25 degrees. One of the most important sections of the course in Beaver Creek is Rattlesnake Alley, a half-tube chute where skiers must use the banks to maximize speed. At the third timing point, Mara was one and a quarter seconds ahead and looking strong into the final turns. The rolls before the Zilschuss were to claim its victims. The first was nearly Mara, who lost vital time on a mistake in the compression, but he recovered well. He crossed the line in first position for the time of 2.10.91.
And although there's lots of races to come, Mara knew he'd skied the course well. On the day that relied on equipment as much as the skiers, Luxembourg's Mark Girardelli got it all wrong. He looked uncomfortable through the gliding sections and seemed to be trying to will his skis to glide faster. But after the combined win, he may have lost the winning edge. I try to do my best always, but uh, I think my goals for these championships are already made and so I have nothing to lose anymore here. In Mark Girardelli's worst result this year, he skied into the finish area and across the line almost two seconds behind the eventual winner. Girardelli's final place, a staggering 21st. But all the surprises weren't confined to the women's events. Hans Gold Torscher, the 21-year-old German who didn't rate a mention in the pre-race prediction, skied the top part of the course like a veteran and was fast through the gliding sections. He's been in the top 15 five times this season. At the midpoint, was only three quarters of a second out with a start position of nine. It's interesting to note that he and Wallace ski on vocal skis. Their technicians seem to have got it right when everyone else got it wrong. Torsha was fast out of the glide and into the Rattlesnake Alley. At the third intermediate checkpoint, he'd made up time and was now within striking distance of the number one spot. Two one hundredths of a second, and as he cleared the finish, the crowd knew they were seeing a new star emerge. Torsha skied the bottom difficult section faultlessly and tucked towards the finish line as the crowd went wild. First position with a time of 2.10.39 and the Germans stolen the number one slot. Poor old Daniel Mara could only watch as his early lead disappeared. Two races later, the reigning downhill world champion Peter Muller blasted out of the start hut and at the first intermediate time was edging ahead. I had a perfect course at the first part and then uh, by Willis face I jumped too long to the right side and then I must uh, stay very hard on skis to come on the right line back in the next two turns I think there, there I lose some time but uh, then the last part I skied very well also Rattlesnake and I had a great course I'm really happy. Out of Rattlesnake Alley Muller was ahead by 0.14 of a second and looked set to storm the finish. But a wide turn into gate 36 slowed him into the compression and Muller had to fight to regain speed. His low tuck and fighting determination forced him across the finish line, only 0.19 of a second behind torture. And Muller was a bridesmaid again. Second position, but a great race. Switzerland's Karl Alpinger skied into third position from a start position of 14. Less than a second separated the top six races. After the race, we talked to a veteran and a new face in downhill history. You must be getting used to coming second because it seems to have happened all through your career. Uh, I have more wins than second place in my career, but at the uh, uh, championships, that's right, in my fifth medal in a row, and uh, I think that's the most important thing who counts for me. How does it feel to be downhill world champion? Uh, you can't believe it. It's a great success for me. and. To realize I need about two or three months, then it's clear for me that I'm the world championship for this year. So the results in the men's world championship downhill, Skardal of Norway sixth, Bess of Switzerland fifth, Mara of Switzerland fourth, Alpinger of Switzerland third, Müller of Switzerland second and Tulcher of Germany first.